I had finished doing China Beach, had done a couple of uh, pilots that uh, hadn't worked in a short-lived series. <clears throat> I had an agent at uh, CAA by the name of Tony Krantz, wonderful agent, who's no longer an agent, he's now a writer and director. <clears throat> and um, he had gotten a call from Tony Thomopoulos, who was at Amblin Entertainment, which was uh, Steven Spielberg's company. And they'd been going through the vaults looking to see if they had anything that hadn't gotten made as a movie that could be a TV show. And they had uh, this thing called the emergency department uh, that Michael Crichton had written for Stephen to direct. Uh, Michael was a medically trained physician and researcher, a scientist, and had done a, um, a series of uh, rotations during medical school at, uh, at Mass General and had written about that experience in like 1974. This was 93, probably. Tony Thomopoulos had found this in the vaults and sent it to CAA. CAA had said, well, John knows something about medicine because he just did China Beach. Sent it to me, and uh, I loved it. I thought there's really a show in this. It was very uh, fragmented and, and chaotic and didn't really conform to what people were sort of looking for at the time. Um, but I responded to it, and, and uh, he said, well, you'd have to meet Crichton, see if he wants to do it. And I met Michael, and we hit it off immediately and became friends right up until his death in 2008. Um, because I said, I think there is a TV show here. Now, nobody else seemed to think so once we went out with it, Tony and, uh, and I and Tony Krantz, both Tonys, Tony Thomopoulos and Tony Krantz. And Michael, we pitched it everywhere. Nobody would do it. Uh, we pitched it everywhere twice, actually. And then um, Jurassic Park came out, and uh, NBC offered us a two-hour movie as a backdoor pilot that they didn't really plan to do as a series because they figured they could sell it off of, uh, off of uh, Michael and Steven. Um, and so we made it, and I brought Rod Holcomb over, who's a good friend who had done the China Beach pilot, wonderful director. And uh, we kind of did it under the radar. I mean, um, they had first said no, they didn't like the script, and then they called me. I was actually at the Writers Guild in a board meeting. I had a call that to be interrupted, so I went out, and it was Tony Krantz saying, and it was like the end of January, the 1st of February, and said, so they picked up everything else over at NBC, and now they just called and said they have a little money left, and if you could pull it together and get it done in eight to ten weeks, they'd make the pilot. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was already doing another pilot at the time for ABC. So we pulled it together and really did it under the radar. Um, turned it in. Uh, they hated it. They were very public about how much they hated it. The lower level executives who are now all running networks uh, were supportive of it. Uh, it kind of sounds odd to say now, but the three lower level executives were Kevin Riley, who was the <laughs> VP of, uh, of drama, uh, John uh, David Nevins, who was his director, and and John Landgraf, who was the manager in the department, they were supportive of it, but uh, the others uh, were not. They never gave us notes because they hated it. They said, "We're not going to waste your time." And then we tested it, and it tested really well. And and to their credit, they said, "Oh, yeah, well, what do we know? It tested really well." It gave us a great spot on Thursday night, and. Uh, we went off and made it, and it was a real whirlwind. Um, I was almost not involved because I was in a position where I was supposed to be exclusive if it got picked up to the ABC show, <clears throat> which was a great show. Uh, we really enjoyed that I had written with a wonderful uh, writer by the name of Wendy Goldman. I uh, starred Bill Macy, and uh, that's how I knew Bill. And. Uh, and it was supposed to go on the schedule, and if it had gone on the schedule, I would have gone off and done that because uh, I was contractually obligated to. And they called me <clears throat> the day before the ABC schedule was announced and said, ah, oh, it almost made the schedule, sorry. So then I called the NBC guys and said, hey, you know, I am available to do it. And then they picked it up. So all these missed little accidents. I mean, you really can't plan any of this. It just kind of happens. Well, we got picked up so late, we didn't have time to actually build the set even if we wanted to. So there was a closed hospital in uh, East LA, which was had been the one of the railroads hospitals for all of their employees. And I forget whether it's the Rio Grande or one of the, one of the big uh, railroad freight companies. And they had this kind of wonderful area downstairs, which had been their emergency area that we took over. But it was complicated because we couldn't turn anything on. They said there was so much bacteria and everything in the, uh, in the heating vents and ducts that we 
So it was really hot and nasty down there because we couldn't put any air conditioning through the ducts. We tried to stick through the windows, but it was in a basement. And um, we had all these ambulances out front, you know, for our scenes. And people from the neighborhood were getting shot, and they'd drive up, and we had to, like, tell them we're not really a hospital. We actually had to station big signs out front that said we're not really a hospital. Um, but we pulled it together and, and had a lot of fun, shot it on a very short schedule for a big uh, show. Rod did an extraordinary job, and Holcomb and was a huge part of what the show became because we didn't have enough time to do it. We couldn't build the set. We didn't have enough time to do it in any way other than he just said, you know what I'll do? I'll just pick up the steady cam, we'll move around, shoot fast. <clears throat> Pre-light everything so that everything looks vaguely crappy because there's no space in this to put in lights and to really light people. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And Tom Del Ruth, the DP, came in and lit the whole thing. He ended up doing West Wing as well. Um, and we just put stuff into the ceiling fixtures and turned on the lights in the rooms and shot it. And it felt real because it was real. It didn't get any realer. It was we were banging into things and smashing into things. And when it got picked up, we built this, rebuilt the set at Warner Brothers. But we only enlarged the walls a little bit. We didn't change the colors. We put in all this crappy tile that had been there and lived with it for 15 years.